spent a lot of time focusing on the major national banks this earnings season. By the way, those stocks are doing well. But what about the small regional players? Take First Horizon Financial, the Tennessee-based bank, with about 300 branches across the southeast. Yesterday morning, this well-run regional reported a strong quarter, delivering inline earnings with higher than expected sales. And in response, the stock roared. It vaulted nearly 3%, attacked on another 1.6% today. But even after this move, First Horizon remains extremely cheap. Selling for 10 times this year's earnings, just 1.6 times its tangible book value. What would it take, and what would it be worth if the place just closed, okay? If it liquidated. So could this, this stock have much more room to run? Let's check in with Brian Jordan. He's the chairman and CEO of First Horizon. Learn more about the quarter and where his company's head. Mr. Jordan, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you. It's good to be back. All right, Brian, if you were to tell me that there was a bank that had 7% loan growth, and over 10% customer deposit growth, and only had $5 million in charge-offs, I would tell you that should have about an 18 price earnings multiple, and it should be about 25. Can you please explain to me what's happened in this country that you have your best quarter I've seen? And, you know, people say, ah, oh, it's okay. What is going on here? Yeah, we, we, have a, we did have a very good quarter. We have an interesting environment. I think at this point there's still a, a fair amount of question about whether this economy is going to die of old age and what that means for the financial institution stocks. And in our case, we, as you know, had an integration last year that took a fair amount of time. But I think what we've proven out over the last half of 2018 and the first quarter of 2019, and I think we'll continue into the second quarter, is we're building momentum and we're seeing great progress on the bank we integrated. The economy is still good. And we're seeing good loan demand. We're seeing good customer deposit activity. We're very excited about how we're positioned. See, what I'm hoping is at a certain point, Brian, you and I will be talking, and we're not going to focus on net interest income or net interest margin and a small amount of basis points. Then we're talking about real growth. And I see when I look at your South Florida properties, when I look at Houston, when I look at the Carolinas, you have genuine growth like a growth company that we would uh, you know, cherish not as, a, as an interest rate play, but actually as a company that's going to put up some maybe double-digit numbers. Yeah, ab absolutely. I think that's one of the unique features of our organization. Tennessee, where we've been for 155 years, is a great market and great growth dynamics. We expanded with toeholds through Capital Bank into North Carolina, South Carolina. We have an eight-year-old presence or so in Houston, Texas. So we've got a toehold in some very strong growth markets, and we see a tremendous amount of opportunity to win and gain share and to build the business and, can, as I said earlier, build that momentum. Uh, are there properties for sale? Because yesterday we spoke with uh, Anna Botin. She's terrific. She's cha uh, cha chairman of Santander. Uh, I'm sure you saw it. She's, she's great. And she, you know, she wants to expand everywhere. And I'm thinking you're in South Florida. Can, are there banks that are still for sale in South Florida that you could buy? I think there's there probably are regular way transactions that can get done. I think the market has probably shifted with the announcement of BB&T and SunTrust. So I right. think transactions that get done will probably be larger MOE type transactions. What I've said is, is that we're really focused on execution in 2019 and 2020 and beyond. We're not really in the, in the frame of mind where we're thinking about acquisition at this point. We really want to capitalize on what we've got in terms of foothold in North Carolina, South Carolina, right. South Florida, and build momentum with that for the short term. Now, a lot of people might be saying, you know, look, he only has $5 million in charge-offs. That's because nobody's getting a loan who's even at all risky. I think that there is a new attitude post-2008-9, but you've got a lot of, lend uh, of, of debtors. I mean, you have a lot of people who want money that would be good credit, but not super. It's not, not like you're not taking any risk, is it? No, no not at all. We have... Uh, a very nice granular portfolio. It is geographically diverse. It is a, a strong portfolio. It's largely a commercial and industrial lending portfolio. So it's largely the commercial entities, some commercial real estate, and then consumer. I think risk is being managed better today in the financial services industry than it was pre-2008, 2009. But there's still a lot of competition for every deal that is out there. The pricing and the structure is still very good for borrowers and I think is still sound for the financial services industry. But I think we're taking measured and better risk today. I think our portfolio, to the extent that it ever does see a downturn in the economy, 
uh, I'll be a little pessimistic and say when. I think our portfolio will perform very, very well. We've done a, a tremendous amount of work over 10 years to change our credit profile to this granular and diversified CNI oriented portfolio, which I think will hold up and perform very, very well throughout a, a change in economy. Okay, so how much of uh, what you said has changed has to do with the 10% of your revenues that you spend on technology, or is that more customer facing, not necessarily uh, a way to be able to measure risk? Yeah, I think, I think it's a little bit of, of, of both. The technology spend in the industry is probably the fastest growing thing in the business. And, and I think the cost pressures on the technology side will go up. It'll be a little bit of both. It'll be back office, it'll be tools to help you decision credit, artificial intelligence and tools of that nature. And it will be the customer facing technologies, things like real time payments, Venmo, excuse me, Zelle, uh, technologies that allow you to, to provide different tools and features that allow customers to do a better job of banking how they want to bank, when they want to bank, and with a tremendous amount of flexibility. So we will have, a, a, I think, an increasing pressure on the, on the technology spend over time. And you may have noted that, that we spent a fair amount of time talking about how we're trying to pay for that with our existing right. cost base. So we're reorienting our cost structure to enable us to make those investments. You right. One last question, unfortunately, has to be quick. Uh, next move by the Fed, uh, rate cut or rate hike? If I had to guess, I'd say it's flat for a while and then down. Wow. Okay, we're going to end it right there. Thank you to Brian Jordan's First Horizon National Corporation Chairman and CEO. Guys, this is what's called an inexpensive growth stock, okay? Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.